guys, everybody ready? Here we go. I'll get absolutely dead serious. <clears throat> Where's your stick? There you go. And, and this, I had to go all the way out to my office in the garage to get it. We would, used to give these away to new members, but it's a yardstick that says, absolutely intriguing by any measure, Elliott Museum, House of Refuge, Martin County uh, Historical Society. And this is my disciplinary tool. I know most of us have already sworn off corporal punishment yes. in any way, but I have just enough experience with these two to know that there's nothing quite as resounding as a good luck <laughs> if, you, if you really get unruly. And I'm a, generally a peaceful guy. So, Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Elliott Museum tonight for this lively discussion with the perpetrators of the wonderful exhibit, Free Electrons, Danuta Rothschild and Terenzo Gann. My name is Rob Steele, and I have the great privilege and honor of being the president and CEO of the Historical Society of Martin County. We're inside the No Name Gallery. If, if Elon Musk is watching this right now, I want you to know, Elon, this gallery is available for a naming right, if you would like this to be the Musk Gallery. If anyone else out there who calls himself a billionaire would like to sponsor this gallery, my phone number is 570-220-7122, but you may want to call our Director of Development, Linda Prangy, because she'll be able to complete the paperwork and I simply wouldn't be able to do that. So. Here we are. We're here to talk about art. This exhibit, Free Electrons, um, was, was a brainchild a short time ago uh, of mine. I wanted to do something truly spectacular and stupendous to really open up this gallery for a showcase for local art in Martin County. One of the initiatives of the Elliott Museum is to try and drive and, and build our local arts community, get it to the point where our artists can earn life-sustaining, family-sustaining wages being an artist in, in Martin County. Sometimes I feel people focus on, on Palm Beach County or even Indian River County sometimes as sources of art and places where you go to see art and, and buy art. And, and we are just savagely dedicated to trying to do our best to make sure that Martin County becomes a bona fide arts community. And when we do things like this, I think it, it really puts that message out there for all to see and hear that, that we are capable, the talent is here, and we're able to, to mount and sustain really terrific, imaginative, and creative exhibits. So thrilled to be able to, to work with these two. Um, the exhibit was so easy to put together. It really happened just at the, at the, at the, at the snap of a finger. And one of my favorite stories I like to tell is, is that when I, when I brought it up, we had a lunch at Stringer's uh, on Sewell's Point, and I said, I'd like to call this Free Electrons. And after our meeting and our lunch, they said, that sounds great. They went and researched electrons and free electrons and how they worked. And the next time I talked, I was so impressed because they said, well, if an electron separates you know, from the nucleus, it can be... 20 miles away from the other electron, and if that other electron starts spinning counterclockwise, it'll start spinning counterclockwise. So I, I just love the fact that they went and, and dug into the science and found out why I wanted to name that free electrons. Because they both think creatively, they both think creatively in their own worlds, and, and yet they're both such good friends and so close that you can feel that energy working together. So that was the whole foundation and basis for this exhibit, and I think it worked really well. I love the fact, uh, because I'm here all day, every day, uh, pretty much seven days a week it seems like sometimes, I get to observe people and how they take in the museum. And people of all ages take delight in this exhibit, and I'm just so happy about that. The children seem to like it probably more, they're, they're kind of ravenous or rabid about the whole thing. They come charging in and, and they just love it because everything's so bold and beautiful and they get it. As you get older, you're conditioned to kind of have some boundaries and to have some things that, uh, blinders that kind of focus your vision so you're only seeing one thing at a time. But 
but they all enjoy it. They all spend a lot of time in here. It's the first time we've had something in this room that has this level of engagement. So very proud of it, very proud of you guys and all the work you do. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for the invitation. You're, you're very welcome. Yeah, it's just really an extraordinary honor to have been, for both of us to have been, to have been invited to participate and uh, collaborate with Free Electrons. I mean, it's been very exciting right from the very first conversation that we've had and our meetings subsequent to that. And I just like the synergy that the three of us had uh, and continue to have, and it's just like the spontaneous brainstorm thing that happens when we get together and we start talking. So A leads to B leads to C, and, and it's, just, it's just been an incredible uh, experience. And then to walk in after we, the three of us, with some other help, hung this show, and we stepped back and we went, Wow, it was it was just. And it's the first room painted in color, right? Right. In a home museum. Yep. We've always been uh, our our paint. We go through dozens of gallons of it a year. Is called China White, which is kind of typical of any museum. And what's this battleship gray or something? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's dark, yeah. but as you can see where we're sitting, when you have a, a, a white framed piece without a, a, a wide frame, it just makes it jump off the wall. So really, really happy with that. I did a tour on Tuesday for people from the Bacchus Museum. They brought down eight of their staff for a tour of the museum, and we talked about the gray walls, and they just said, oh, it works awesome. so well. Yeah. It's just so great, really fun. Now you have to come back next week on Wednesday. Torenzo gonna paint my portrait life, and I'm gonna paint his portrait life. When did we decide that? <laughs> now, kids. And don't be late. <laughs> this is exactly how it works. I'm going to dig into the, these probing questions. <clears throat> As you've, I've already told you, I prepared with weeks of study and, and rigorous uh, discourse and everything. And so my first question, everything is, is based on creativity. My, my great love for these two is based on their outside the box creativity. There's a saying that, that I adhere to and, and love quite a bit. My staff knows it because they try and do the exact same thing. We don't just think outside the box here. We never look inside the box. We're really not remotely interested in what other people are doing. We're interested in what we're doing. That's really where it is. So in that process and in that life, I'm, I'm going to just take a wild guess here, but I'm, I think all three of us are probably over 40 years old. <laughs> yeah, just, yes. just, just over. 41. Or so. <laughs> we, we've been around for a, a little time, and we've, we've been creative people our whole life. All of us in the room are creative our whole life. Unfortunately, our educational system sometimes kind of funnels that creativity, and you lose a lot of it sometimes by, by Right, young absolutely. Age. And, and you have to be a free electron to hold on to that creativity for your whole life. So in that, you have struggles. So my first question is simply, um, not lifelong, you know, a lifelong perspective, but current struggles. What, what are your struggles with creativity? Everybody always wonders, if you're writing a book and they say, you haven't finished a book, you haven't sent me chapter 17. If your publisher calls, and they call that writer's block or whatever, artists have block or whatever, but I'm just interested to know, and this is completely unexpected. If they had given me their questions, this would all be easy. But but these are my questions. I, I want to know what what's what's a creative struggle you face or one you face. Well, you get stuck, but your mind is still working. Okay, and you're thinking, oh, maybe I should do this, maybe I should do that. And for me, when I get stuck. I pick up a brush and a canvas and I start putting colors on. And the minute I start doing it, ideas are starting to flow in and I got a painting. So 
my advice for any artist. When you get stuck, you're not inspired, do something with the paint and the brush. Doesn't matter, textures and what, and it's gonna come. I promise you that. What's the longest you've ever been stuck? When, you really felt when like I quit it? smoking. <laughs> and then I had to go back, and that's how I stopped, start again. Six months, I couldn't paint. Terenzo, same question. Where, where, where have you been creatively challenged when you just look back and you think, what happened? I thought I was a creative guy and all of a sudden I lost it. As I look back, I, I used to paint and use, uh, and I still do to some degree, but I would create in my mind an image. I would put that image on perhaps a smaller canvas or I would draw it. Uh, or if it's from a photograph, I would take that and use that as a reference. And then I found that most of the time when I worked in that way, I was so disappointed in that my result did not meet my expectation. So then I became a terrible failure. <laughs> And I can't tell you the number of pieces of art, drawings, even some paintings, even some larger things, that I just took to the street and got rid of them. And then there was a point, probably in the mid-80s, when I started to really be thinking again about creativity, because there was a long period of time when I did not paint. I was doing something else. <coughs> And what I realized is to be part of the process. In other words, uh, something like Danuta said, uh, pick up the brush, the paint, the pencil, whatever, and make that first mark. And I can tell you that it can be like the deer with the headlight in your eyes. You're like, oh my gosh, what if I fail? And so that, that hindered me. And so then I started working with just an idea. Maybe it was just a color or a section. And then I got fully emerged in the process of painting, of creating. And if I might reference one painting that's in, in the show here, <clears throat> the painting on that wall, uh, Dancing Through the Storm, started out as an abstract painting. And if you look at the upper left corner, you can see how the, the subject's arm is extended and coming down. That started out as an abstract painting. I was working with big colors and it was much more vibrant than that. And when I got to the blue, an arm started to emerge and then a shoulder, then the chest. And I suddenly changed completely from what I was doing, and this is what I call discovering during the process. And so I probably spent, I would say easily two or three weeks, maybe longer working on that, because once I got the, the image down and started working with it, then I started playing with the colors, I changed the background and those kinds of things. But to get back to getting unstuck is to take that first step. And sometimes I just have to walk away from it and come back and okay, uh, my, my right hand is my dominant hand, so I might just take a brush or something and start with my left hand and make a mark and then see what emerges. Great thoughts. Thank you guys. Um, I know Danuta, you're oftentimes involved with education and arts. I mean, I met someone tonight that's going to be meeting with you soon and, and learning. Terenzo, I'm not sure I'll find out from your background, but as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, so many of us had an art class here and there. In elementary school, we all had art classes. You were lucky if you had some in high school. And to continue that learning process, I, I think one of the ways to become a bona fide arts community and engage artists in other ways is, is arts education. So. 
if you would just share me how share with all of us how you feel about creative arts education and, and the role we all play and, and where we're headed, what we can do. Just talk to me about it. Well, you know, I started teaching kids when my kids were like in the kindergarten and first grade and because they took the arts out of the school. So I was donating my time to teach kids because I want not only my kids to learn, but others. And then, because uh, my husband was an architect and, and really a good wood maker, he built me little benches for drawing. And, uh, and I had the whole neighborhood kids coming in every Sunday <laughs> for a couple hours to draw with chalk and, and, and uh, charcoal. So that I, I've been always in education, and <coughs> I was not only teaching kids, but and adults that they wanted to learn. And even right now, I have one student over there, which is Anna, and I have my assistant, and uh, I've been teaching Maya since she was 12, and she's magnificent, and she become my assistant now, and using my studio and painting with us, and and that's what I would like to do. I mean, like we had a great studio in a museum when just opened, and I was teaching workshops and kids and summer camps. So much fun to just watch the kids it, it, it's to always... inspire them. It's outstanding, and the future of this museum, this gallery that we're sitting in, and everything else, I believe is kind of based in education. If people learn how to appreciate and understand art and, and come out and see it, it's so important. And as a society, I, I hope we'll step up and pick up the pieces and move forward. Lorenzo, what are your feelings on creativity and arts education? That has had a huge impact on me in creativity and arts education because one of the most impactful persons in my life was my 11th grade art teacher. And she gave us as a class an assignment. And what was so cool about her was that she was one of those who was out of the box as well. So it was much like a um, an opportunity to explore and paint and draw without any rules about it. So she gave us a, a piece of paper, uh, 22 by 30, a standard arches watercolor paper. And, and so th this is where, uh, just thinking now, this is where I got into the process totally I was abandoned to the project. There was no, I wasn't restricted by learning classes, rules, and all that stuff. So I just got at it. I'm throwing paint around, I'm making a mess, and I'm doing all these things. I put it down, I walk away. Next time I come back to class, we go to the table where she put all the, the graded projects. I pick up my painting, I turn it over, and she had given me an A. And I went, really? <laughs> I was stunned. And then I'm looking at her, and she's looking at me, and then she had this really wonderful few words of encouragement. And so that takes me now to current times. I was privileged to have been asked to be one of the judges at the local high school uh, art exhibit at the Cultural Center. And going through that and seeing the amazing art that's being created in our community by not children, young adults really, 10, 11, 12th grade. And some of the things that I saw there were so personal, so powerful, uh, revelatory. Uh, it even spoke to my, uh, one of my, my sacred themes is social relevance. And this one piece that stands, to, to, stands out for me was 
this photograph that this woman had made, this young woman that reflected some of the childhood trauma that she had experienced. And I'm going, oh my gosh, this is so powerful. And here she is doing this amazing photograph that tells such a story and it revealed such risk on her part. And so I am totally, totally enthused and impressed by just in Martin County, the kind of art that's being created and where it's going. And on that note today, <coughs> on that note, comma, today, I uh, was asked to meet a dear friend here because he couldn't make it tonight. So I met with, with Ed and we're talking about art and, and whatnot and he's a retired social uh, sociologist. And so the guy is just amazing. He will talk nonstop. And it's almost like one giant run on, run on sentence about so many things. And I'm going, back up, Ed, back up. And so it comes down to what he was saying, how we are losing things in our culture. By academia, the, the, the impact on cutting back on budgets for art education and music and all of those things and he said, it's such a shame because we're, we're no longer exposing our young people and students to the arts, to music, to painting. And he was a college professor at a university and he said in his last years before he retired, they even started dropping classes on critical thinking. And for him, that was, that's the time I'm gonna retire. So to answer that question, I think it's enormously uh, important that, that children, young adults, anybody here who hasn't experienced creativity, oh my gosh, by all means. And I love what, I, I haven't known Danuta well except for maybe the past year or two, but before I met Danuta, I would see things that she's teaching the various students around and the, and the quality of the work that she was encouraging and drawing out of them was just phenomenal. So we need more of that, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think the teachers, art teachers, are. we need to inspire young people. We do. How many, where's Maya? She become an artist. She's becoming a professional artist. And I'm very proud of her. And she said that would be that was because I said something that you were talented or something like that. What did I say? I can't well, remember. Just the fact of like seeing you being successful as that being your career, that really, you know, kind of made me come to realize that it's possible to actually live life as an artist and not have to depend on just like a regular nine to five job or anything like that. As long as you stick with it and you really, you know. Um... Bless your heart, Maya. The, the common thread, as you can see, Danuta's message to Maya, Terenzo's teacher in his junior year or sophomore year of high school was, go with your heart. Yeah, follow, and I just have to say that time. I've watched Maya Maya's work progressed over the past six or seven months. Yep. Phenomenal. She's ama amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yep, you, you cross that line all of a sudden. Yep. You're, you're there, Maya. We're loving it. I want to continue this conversation in, in the same vein and, and get your thoughts. You created an art lover in, in Maya, and I think we're all tasked. Everybody in this room is really an art, art lover in one fashion or, an, or another. You know, what, what, what can we do? to try and build that community so that we create more art lovers. When I graduated from high school, we, we moved to Europe and I was lucky enough to spend quite a bit of time traveling and seeing how everything worked. And then I noticed the difference between the appreciation of the arts in Europe as opposed to the United States. It was my first soiree across the pond and, and seeing how it all worked. And, and people were educated in ballet and orchestra and everything else and, and people turned out in huge numbers to support these things. The museums on Sundays when they're free, packed. I mean lines outside the doors and everyone coming in because they had some understanding. It had been part of their education. So 
So what are your thoughts on how we can how we can build that art lover, that person, you've created a lot of them yourself personally, so how do we do that, Danuta? Okay, now, you mean at the Elliott Museum or just overall? Anywhere in the world, but I love to focus our attentions on Martin County because this, this is where we're going to make it happen and it'll impact our lives. Well, a uh, wonderful way to have some kind of events and get involved people in creating something can be even throwing paint and sticks and doing uh, projects together like we paint that giant painting mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. we can do it with a lot of people right on the ground doesn't have to be on a wall there's so so many things that can be done but obviously we need budget, we need donations, and we need event planners to do that. Pull it off. I like a programming standpoint. Yes. Start with a program and, and then drive up your census, try and get more people in. We can paint those antique cars with a special paint. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then we can hose it down. <laughs> they, it was done before. Yeah. Get the yardstick. Yeah. I think. <laughs> Renzo's calling for the yardstick. <laughs> but you are not aware of it. It was done at the Elliott Museum. We had uh, a police cars, a few of them, and the kids and adults would come and paint the cars. Yeah. And they were fabulous. Often and then we hosted it up. Oftentimes when you paint a police car, you end up with your hands zip-tied in your <laughs> But they allowed us. Yeah. Shortly after. <laughs> That's great. I don't think we'll be doing that. I don't want to break anyone's heart, but we won't be painting the antique cars at the Elliott Museum anytime soon. <coughs> well, I Unless think it's a, you want to donate for that particular thing, maybe. we can turn it to our <laughs> just like we did the door. It's a bold and beautiful idea, but our car curator has arms like Popeye. <laughs> Is, is paint his cars, so we're gonna just we'll keep them right there. Talk to me about creating more art lovers. What's your strategy? I think How that think begins at home, if you will. I am such a strong advocate and believer that we are all creative. We all have some kind of creativity. Now it may not necessarily be painting uh, per se, but I have I have witnessed. Personally, people who never picked up a paintbrush till their 60s. And, and uh, there's, there's this man that I kind of connected with, and I'm doing some mentoring. I met him at, a, at an art event where Danuta and I used to show our work uh, from Boca. His name is Mike. And we struck up a conversation, and he's starting to send me uh, drawings and paintings, and I'm seeing this guy develop. I've known him less than a year and I've seen already in the portraits that he's done amazing uh, progress. So I think it's a matter of getting involved, take a class, um, do something that's so out of your comfort zone because once we ignite that spark of creativity you have no idea where that may go, where that may lead, where that may take you. And then suddenly, now uh, I can think of a few other people who suddenly got involved in a small art league. And now they're involved in the community. And now other people are seeing Joe's work and now, hey Joe, tell me about that. Well, I think I might like to do that, Fred. <laughs> so it's just, I, I think you start where, where you start at home. You, you promote the idea because absolutely everybody in this room has some kind of creativity. Whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not, if you don't believe it, borrow my belief mm -hmm. because I've seen amazing things in people of all ages uh, begin to step into a creative uh, adventure. So I think in kind of going with what Danuta was saying about creating events 
It's like, let's, let's have a group of people who know nothing about art, and we're going to come over, and we're going to do something together. This is an amazing moment for me. Now, I don't usually answer my own questions once I ask them, <laughs> but, but I, I love so much what you said, and, and you're kind of feeding into to what I'm thinking. We have to actively encourage people to reawaken their creativity so they can enjoy all this. As I said, I, I'm here a lot, I observe people's behavior, and we've had other exhibits in this room, and the walls were white, and the paintings were evenly spaced, and they'd walk by, and if they weren't really an art person or into art, they'd, they'd walk right by the room and not walk in. Now, it's not because I want to sell more tickets, even though they accuse me of being P.T. Barnum around here. It's really that I want people to enjoy creativity and enjoy what happens at the museum. So when this exhibit was developed, the entrance is part of my trickery and chicanery to kind of get that person that would traditionally walk by this exhibit and go, oh, art smart, I'm not going to go in there. I came to see the cars, I'm here to do something else. And trick them, make them come over and touch the little plasma ball by the door, or look at the door and think, what did they do to that perfectly good industrial steel door that costs $670 now? And then come in and see it, and then all of a sudden, they're caught in it and they're mesmerized, and they, they walk around and they look at every single thing in the room. So. I think you're right. I think you're both right. I think we have to actively come up with ways to get people to expose themselves to what we're trying to do. Even in their advanced years, it's oh, never yeah. too late. Absolutely. We can do it in a parking lot. Absolutely. We can paint your car. <laughs> My new car. <laughs> My new car. <laughs> yes, and then, and then pose it all up afterwards. I'll, I'll help pose it up. <laughs> all right, next question. Um, and, I, and I've touched on it a little bit, we've talked on it a, a lot of different ways, but it's so important to me that w as we promote local artists, we have a room in our uh, gift shop downstairs that's just filled with local artists' artwork and we're, we're trying to sell it so that they can create um, sustaining jobs as artists. That's so important to me and I think it's so important to the, the health of, com of the community. So. What are your ideas or thoughts on creative ways we can become that bona fide arts community that everybody looks to? And when they say, oh, you know, they, they go back up north to Massachusetts and their friends say, oh, where do you go in Florida? Well, we're in uh, Martin, Martin County. And it's this really wonderful, cool, funky arts community. I want people to describe us in those words. So how do we do that? How do we accomplish that? Oh, my God. Stay naked on the freeway. <laughs> Don't know. But they're signing. Okay. Show of hands. Stand naked on the freeway. We'll pass around the sheet and get your email addresses. I'll be calling sick that day. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I just, you know. So An electron. Question. I got a message. I know. You downloaded it. Yes. So, um, can you ask me the question again? I, I sure can. <laughs> what creative things can we do to uh, make Martin County recognized as a, as a bona fide arts community? We can be skipped over sometimes. People just say, well, we'll go to the art exhibits and things that are happening in Palm Beach or we'll run up to Vero Beach and they just skip right by us. How, how do we get them to stop here? Maybe murals. Murals. And not only done individually, but a group murals. Public art? Public art. I mean, it's fabulous. Great idea. Yeah. Let's do more of it. Where will we start? Elliot Museum. <laughs> <laughs> I think either Danuta or someone talked to me about that, painting the front of the museum, just making the whole thing a, some kind of a mural. Or I mean, I know we can before. do with something that is changeable and not obnoxious, but something fun. Uh, you can even put something at, at the front of the museum on the ocean and have people coming in an event and paint that and leave this for a while. You know, like on uh, plywood, 
and just have paint and all kinds of stuff. Sticks and stones, they can glue it, they can paint it, they can do portraits, they can do cars. I mean, this will be fabulous. Public art. Public art. And then maybe <coughs> putting those things every so often in different parking lots because that's where the room is. I like it. And and have an event. I like it. Terenzo, same question. What, what are your thoughts, creative ways we can let people know we're a bona fide arts community in Martin? Well, two things come to mind. One, I will attach to what Danuta was saying about doing something maybe here at the Elliott and to explain that further, Lynn and I went to an arts conference in California uh, several years ago, and outside their auditorium, they had this big board, uh, and I, I think it was a tree or something, this sort, and they had everybody who was attending it to come in and draw on it, paint on it, and they, they left it up. So that's, that's kind of one thing that I think we probably need more discussion and thought about. But the other thing that came to mind is in North Carolina, uh, Lynn's sister Kathy uh, was, is involved, she's a very active artist there, but in one of the um, projects they did, I'm not quite sure what, what it was called, but they had uh, replications or paintings of various kinds of quilts. So it might be a three foot square and uh, people were um, chosen to paint these different kinds of quilts and styles, and then they took them around and they had them all over various parts of town. So it would be kind of like a treasure map, if you will. <laughs> you go from one to two to three to four, and you could see all these various types of quilts. So who's, who? Why not do that with paintings? Why not do abstract painting or just open it up to paintings in general or um, monuments to Stuart? Uh, just, there's so many things that we could do. There's the islands, there's the whole tropical thing. Um, and when people come to this part of the world, they're looking for something that is tropical so it could be tropical scenery. It could be, there's so many things that could be done. But I think that would get awareness. And then we need some good marketing people who has great experience in promoting things to take that and push it on social media. And then uh, there could be a contest involved that the winner gets a, a bucket of, uh, of, of these. Um, <laughs> There's a way to get people jazzed up. So it's really kind of creating the sizzle of what it's all about and get people talking about it. And then do two or three events over the course of a season with a grand finale at the end. I mean, there's Great ideas. A, yeah. Action. What about like in New York many years ago, they have the bulls <coughs> all over. Right. In Los Angeles, they have the angels, and I create one of them. And I'll tell you, they were so amazing. There were angels all around the city. And at the end, they were auctioned off and will be donated to uh, the youth, uh, young youth to enrich in arts. I like it. I, I lived in a smaller agricultural community in Michigan, and, and we did pigs. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> so same thing. It was, yeah. it was popular. I like it, and then I like the idea of something iconic, outdoor public art that people then take their picture in front of to say, "I was in Stewart in front of this piece right. of art that exactly. everybody, yeah. everybody knows about." So yeah. th those are great ideas. My next question may be a little bit more pointed, and I mean, there's no ill will or, or, or bad thinking on my part with this, but but how do we create a buyer's market here in, in Martin County. Um, I feel like that's the next threshold for us to cross. I, I keep talking about becoming a bona fide arts community, but I'd also like to be recognized as a place where you can come to buy art that helps create those family sustaining jobs 
for artists in your community. And, and I've watched this and observed it and tried to do it everywhere I've lived. And, and I always have this, this picture in my mind of four nice women riding in their car, talking 90 miles an hour, getting to a town where they can go to a couple, three art galleries, maybe four art galleries, and look at them, have lunch, load up their car with art that they bought, and then go back to wherever they came from. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is how you get it done. You, you kind of get those people that have the money and the wherewithal and the desire to buy your art. Make your community a place where they feel like they can come and not um, get in the car and drive six miles to four different places in the county, but come and kind of hit a concentration of things to see art and galleries and shops. So I'm just, those are my thoughts. What, what are your thoughts on, on things we could do to position ourselves? Careful, I got, I'll get my stick because I may still need that. <laughs> So what, what do you think, Danuta? How do we do that? How do we I'm agree? trying to figure it out myself. I know. I've been here to help. I'm working on it every day. Doing a lot of PR on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I'm sure right now it's a lot of things that you can sell on the internet, because that's what it is. But bringing people over here, I have no clue. Lake, Lake Worth did a project where they had a block of houses that were designed so that the artists could live upstairs and then the first floor was a studio gallery space and they had them all lined up so that people could travel to the location in one block they could hit 12 different artists and then of course the artists are always needing a place with affordable housing. Martin County, of all the beautiful things about it, affordable housing is probably not one of them. Um, yeah, it's a little bit expensive. So, what, what are your thoughts, Terenzo, on, on how we can can do more to attract buyers and help support? Well, I think we have to overcome um, <clears throat> the established. This is my opinion. I could be totally wrong, but I think what we have <clears throat> is this established opinion. That Stewart's just kind of a good old Florida town that doesn't offer much other than a slow country life, if you will. And that has changed so much just in the 10 years we've lived here. Yeah. So I think one of the things that has to be overcome is this um, belief that, that Stewart doesn't have a lot to offer culturally. Now, Having lived here, I know that's not true because there's the Lyric, there's the Elliot, um, there's Martin Arts, so there are certainly things. But one of the things I think the Elliot is doing by having this colossal Norman Rockwell event is bringing attention to Stewart. And I know you and I and Danuta talked about how do we create a destination place for a day or two a weekend. So I think there has to be some serious marketing in that. I think we have to really push the idea that there's more cultural, especially in the arts, uh, for people to find and explore. When you look at the number of communities that are popping up all over again, South Florida, especially in Martin County, all the green grass and trees are disappearing and we've got condos and houses and all these things going up. There has to be a percentage of people living there that are qualified art buyers. So how do we get them into our market, into our place? And when I talk to some of the galleries, I don't know if they're really being... Um, 100% honest in how they're doing. It's, it's hard to, having been in the gallery business, I know that can really be a challenge. But there has to be um, more things like the art walk. That's just one aspect of it. That's like, what are we going to do on Friday night? Let's go have a beer and a burger and go stroll the street. So those are probably what I would call, and I don't mean this in a demeaning way, they're probably C clients. You know, if you look at A, B, and C clients. So how do we get the C clients to B, and how do we get B clients to A who are going to come in and look at all this and stuff say, I must have all of this now. <laughs> you know? It sounds like it's, a Harvard MBA when he talks about it. <laughs> I think there has to be 
dedicated dollars to building a, a budget for marketing and driving that message that, man, there is an awful lot of awesome stuff to see in Martin County when we have amazing things here. So I think that's certainly one of them. And then to your comment earlier about Lake Worth, wouldn't it be cool if we could find in a warehouse section or something that where we could create an environment or an opportunity for five or six artists to build and to have studios, whether they live there, don't know that, you know, the zoning and all that stuff. But there's a place in Asheville called, uh, I don't recall if it's the factory, it's on the river. It's an amazing place of probably a dozen different artists. And we've been there several times and absolutely love it. So that's like, when we're going to Asheville, we're going there. We just want to see what's going on. So I think it's build a plan, design that plan, get funding, get people with some serious money behind it that can have a passion for doing great things in our community and having the arts really thrive because nobody wants to be a starving artist. And there's a lot of people that are challenged. I mean, I have good times and not so good times. So uh, I think that's a struggle. So um, I think that's probably one of the main things is to get a, a not a large committee, you know what that means, <laughs> get a few key people who can cast a vision and get on board and be unified in executing that vision and make it a five-year plan. And then when you're done in five, what's the 10-year plan? So the first-year plan is let's find five or six people that are well-heeled, who can buy into this whole vision and run with it. Yep. From, from our standpoint, what we're trying to do at the Elliott Museum now is create excitement around things, touring exhibits like the Rockwell exhibit, and then when they come to see it, they also come upstairs and say, look at this, this is amazing, these are, these are local artists, and then try and drive business to the local artists that way. Draw, draw them in for something that's an, an international touring exhibit, and then push them towards the, the local artists. So that's the kind of thing, but, but it requires all of this, it requires more galleries, and closer together and, and just the ability to stitch it together and market it to everybody. So we'll keep pushing, we'll do it together, and we won't give up, will we? My, my final question to, to both of you, and I, I know the answer to this one from you because I've observed how you work and, and watch, but it'll be so much fun for everybody in the room and everybody that sees any video that's been captured tonight to find out about your creative process. I, I know it, it's involved and you think through it, but, um, and the, the, the trick of all this, and I'm gonna start with Terenzo and give you just a second to think about this. It's mean if I go to Terenzo first, but that's okay. Because I'm only gonna give you two minutes and I'm gonna watch my, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna watch my watch really closely so. And your two minutes starts now, Terenzo. Your creative process. Go the ahead. creative process. Uh, I spend a lot of time in my head. I, I see art everywhere. You can see things if you look. You're going to see stuff. So the, the number one thing is to look. Pay attention. Little things. Some of the things that I've done that I'm honored to have that's been purchased is a gate hook that I painted when we were in Barbados. Thank you. Um, when we were in another uh, island, I saw this wonderful obelisk. I went, oh my gosh, I have to paint that. I painted that. So look at things. There's gems all around. It doesn't have to be wild and big and glorious, but you can take a little thing. Here's, a, here's something that I haven't done yet, but I was walking out of my office a couple of years ago, and across the parking lot there was this dead rat. And I went, wow. What's his story? <laughs> so I took his picture and whatnot, and I'm thinking every, everything has a story. So I got, well, was, was he trying to get food for his family and he got mugged? Um, there's just so many things. So I know that I can take that rat and make it very interesting and perhaps even glittery and pretty. You might want to have it as a 
<laughs> no. Um, look for it, you'll see it, because God has created this amazing world with so much in it. I see clouds as moving sculptures. You just look at, oh my gosh. And if you look long enough, you'll see this amazing cloud just vanish, and all of a sudden it's gone. Wow, what an experience. So look for it. You're going to find it. It's awesome. I love it. And your two minutes are up. That was a lot of oh, yeah. so that, Thank you very much. That deserves a big round of applause. Yeah. Puts a little bit of pressure on you, but I think, I think you can do it too. And Terenzo, we can all understand what you mean when you say you look around and you just see things like potatoes, potatoes. and shotgun shells yeah. and condoms and toast. Yes. You see all kinds of everyday objects yes. and they suddenly become art. So we can see he told the truth, his process. Is so what was the question? <laughs> Me come over there. The question, question was, in two minutes time, please describe to all of us here and all of us for eternity, what's your creative process? How do you do it? A lot of thinking and doing because I don't believe in being stuck. So the first thing what I do, I pick up a canvas or whatever it is and start throwing paint on it and before you know it you got a beginning of a series of painting going just like you see over there tribute to the masters right I mean I did about 60 of it so when you open that can of worms with your creativity it's starting to flow and it's one after another. And even when you stop working on it, after a few years, you see something else and you paint to the same theme. I love painting themes. I'm a storyteller, so. I, at the risk of taking my phone and typing in it while I'm in the middle of an interview with them, I wanted to type in my phone, I don't believe in being stuck. I, I think that should be a, a tattoo for artists. You should maybe think about a tattoo studio in Martin County because that's really what it all comes down to. You know, you can have what writer's block or you can just be determined and say, I refuse to be stuck. And I'm going you to just have to do it. You cannot think about how to, you just have to pick up the brush. The minute you start throwing the paint on the canvas, things start opening up. There's a saying, I can't remember which famous artist it was, but inspiration will find you, but it must find you working. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Love it. And I love you guys. This has been, this has been a great journey, and our journey's not, not even halfway over. We still have a, a lot What are we going to do next? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. But I mean, just in the, in the run of this show, it's, we're, we're thrilled to have it. We're thrilled to have you sharing your talent. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank thrilled you. to have you opening up with everybody here tonight. And speaking of opening up, I'd love to open up the floor if, if anyone has any questions for our, our wildly talented artists up here tonight. I've asked, all, I've asked all of mine. Anyone like else? To. And I, I have to. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, you got one right here. Well, when, you, when Anu was talking about um, billboards, you know, and such, I just, you know, Stuart is Stu Art. You know, you can capitalize on Stu Art. And I thought about when people are driving from up north and they're entering into Martin County. If you can have a billboard that, you know, it's just very art, artsy, grabs attention. Stu art, something like, we love art. Text, love art. And then have some type of a thing where it will come up and it will show all of the different places that you can go see art. Anyway. I love it. That came up. I like see, that's what I I, Rob. I love it. I might also mention that. That art is in Martin too. That's right. That's right. The, the whole county. So it's really we have no excuses. Exactly. It's built in. Anyone else? Any, any mind-boggling questions? That's why Olga calls the church the 1895 of Church of Stu Art. Stu right. Art. Stu Let's see, Stu. art is everywhere.
It All right. Is. Yeah, wait, wait. Hey, I wait, one more. Yeah. Okay, so, yes. Uh, years ago, my father-in-law was in the hospital, and there was it was attached to a um, nursery in, uh, with babies. And they had a tree there. Every time a baby was born, they would add their name to a leaf on the floor. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. So we would walk around there and just see the different names. So you have the Elliot, maybe do something with artists. Every time you have an artist here, have something painted or... I, I love it. I am. I was born in Dayton, Ohio in 1957, and every male baby got a plastic football that said Ohio State. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, I'm in Michigan, but I like your idea much, much better. We were in Savannah, Georgia for a wedding, and I heard about Savannah sidewalks art. I could not wait to go and walk through. Unfortunately, it rained. <laughs> but I thought Stewart sidewalks. We could, if they could do art once a month and have artists come in, and if you include children, then you get parents. Parents love to see things that their children do, so maybe sidewalk art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything public. Uh, I lived in Delray Beach for a couple of years, and they spent over a million dollars on some sculptures right when you get off the expressway in arches, and they were very controversial because 90% of the people didn't like them at all. Yeah. But they were still talking about them. Exactly. And it's still art, so it really doesn't matter. So whether it's on 95 when you enter Martin County or, or when you, you get off at Canner Highway or, or wherever, if you have some public art to let them know, we're thinking about this and this is who we are and this is how we look. So thank you. I hate, yes. I hate taking over the floor, but one more thing. When you took over, people, I've lived here for eight years, they would say, oh, the Elliot, there's cars there. There's a lot more than cars, and I talked to them about how you would consign artists here, and then I would bring them here. We didn't know that. We thought it was just so. After you took over, because I think you're opening up a lot of doors, which is wonderful. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Great stuff. Anyone else? No. Are we all set? Thank you so much for coming, everyone. Wait. Can wait. we make a plug for our catalog? Oh, yeah. Wait. I have one reminder. We have catalogs for both artists that are available tonight. They can, they will sign these for you. They have the artwork in here, uh, beautiful things. So catch either one of them. You want to do this downstairs or up here? Yeah, downstairs. They're available at the counter. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>